We have double. Okay, we're recording now. And thanks for catching that, Kara. How's that? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I need to step back on starting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what you'll find is, and we're not anticipating a lot of this, but just in case uh, that, uh, and the registration you're going to see is a pretty, uh, it might take three or four minutes at the most, maybe five minutes. However, if you wanted to save what little you've done so far, um, you'll notice here that there's an ID and that allows you to come back into that same site, click on return to registration, enter this um, registration ID, and it'll get you back to you know, where you left off. You know, you know do abbreviation. So what, what they're asking for here is that you're acknowledging that you've read the guidelines and that you do feel that you're eligible for funding. And you would scroll down, and this is where then um, you are completing the registration process. So I'm just going to table through this pretty quickly. I'm from Crystal Lake, so you'll I'll put in those. Now, you're going to see that there's two phones here, and we're kind of anticipating that this first one uh, might be your office phone. And what we ran into in our testing, and we're starting to see this more and more with our other systems, um, is that uh, when this registration is done, the intent was for you to get an email with a login to come back into the application. Um, most of our testing was done with trying to send it to a Gmail account. Though most of your e emails may very well be your, your agency's email. Uh, those tend to go through just fine, but Gmail is really um, cutting back because the way this is set up is that our server is, is going to reflect that the e email is coming from Yosh, but underlying it is coming from our server. So they're seeing that they're not the same. So how do we solve that problem? Well, we're going to text you. Uh, we're going to both email it to you, and if it gets through, great. But we're also going to text you the um, login. And so this is where it would be important to put your personal uh, phone number there. Uh, don't put any, no formatting, just put the number uh, uh, 10 digits only. And last, in terms of required fields. So you'll see that the uh, red asterisk on the left of the field label is the uh, reflects required. And then the last required field is the EIN. What, I, what we would like, if you would, is to put your uh, agency or organization's website uh, in here. Um, and you'll see there's another agency logo one. You don't need to worry about that one. We'll take care of it by going to your site and then we can add your logo to your profile. So when you log in, you'll see your logo along with the other access to the, um, to the system. <clears throat> so with that being done, then it's a matter of uh, username, what username that you want to use. And you'll get this message. So I just got the Log in. I was trying to check the chat. There's so many. 19, oh, there's a lot oh, of people oh. on and 19. Excuse me. Just to make sure. Sure. Thanks. Where are we here? Oh. Oh, 
I think it's just around. Maybe it was about the screen share such. I think it's okay. Thank you. Oh, sure. No, thank you. Yeah, maybe I should log out. No, Yosh, it's fine now. It's fine now. They said it's fine now. Uh, so there's two ways to do this. You can then uh, log log off and uh, go to lyletownshipsouthernoid.org or just go right back up to here if you're doing all at once. And we have two-factor authentication. So you'd be asked for the phone number you want to receive the codes for. And we're in. Any questions about the registration? Okay. Um, the expectation is that the individual that's doing the registration is a, you know, the, an executive of the um, agency. If there are other users that you want from your agency to use the system, you can come here and set them up. What we certainly encourage you to do is change your password to one that's you know, more personal to you. Um, the password is a, a one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and a special character and a combination of at least eight. Uh, and if you happen to not meet that, the, there's an error message uh, stating what you still need to do. Agency details, that's just what we, so the system is, has posted your registration information. And if you decide you want to change your two-factor authentication to say a different number or what have you, um, that would be the process there. But pretty simply just starting out is clicking on agency. And uh, the home page will have information from the 708 board that, um, and this is done in real time. So Yosh or anyone else from the board can come in and update this, but this, uh, Recommendation is that when you do log in and click on the home page, is to you know take a moment to step through and read um, you know what uh, might be uh, documented there. Downloadable files, and what I'm going to do then um, after this is to uh, put the um, user manual there as well, so you can click on it and download the, uh, the user manual um, instead of having a paper copy if that's convenient. So that's the, that's the home page. And then getting to the, the crux of this is the application. So uh, here's information again, here's another message board. Um, the instructions I'm gonna update, but right now all the instructions are on the, um, the one document. I haven't updated this yet to reflect that. Uh, so um, you read the message, scroll down. And what you have here as the header is, uh, Defaults to uh, Lyle Township, of course. Um, the fiscal year is 2025. That's when the grant funding um, ends for the particular application here. Um, what you'll see after we get going here is that this will uh, update with all of the different sections that need to be uh, submitted in order for the um, application to be considered. As you, as you submit different sections, um, there'll be a percentage uh, progress. There's the deadline. And so what you'll see then is step one, as I uh, summarized before, and there's the agency general, the board member list, if you want to fill it out online or the key documents here. So 
This is going to be pretty much the same process throughout. You click on create and create again. And this header is going to be important in a moment. And oh, don't do this. Oh, don't do this. We, Doesn't it always happen? Hmm. Excuse me for one second. I can't tell you how many times we tested this. I'm in the middle of it right now, and on the um, eighth page, can't see the pages here. It's uh, saying it's not linked to the report template. Um, 288.30. Well, I, I clicked on create to uh, fill out the, enter the question, say report template number must have some value. It's the agency form, agency general. Okay. So this, uh, we'll, we'll have that fixed momentarily. Maybe if nothing else, we'll demonstrate that we can act on these things fairly quickly. Hopefully that is some, um, some redeeming part of this. Uh, This is for uh, if you want to um, fill out your board member list and uh, executive staff online. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you um, want to add beyond what's already here, um, you just click on additional member and that will give you another line to uh, fill out. Uh, save as you go. And when you're done and satisfied with the um, content, you click on submit. Uh, and that again is that step that's necessary to close out this, uh, this particular part of the application. The last step in the um, under step one is to, um, you'll see here under key documents upload. And again, if you don't fill out your board member executive staff list um, on mine here, you can upload that document and the system will reflect that that requirement has been met. Uh, the, um, but as you go ahead and browse to select uh, the various documents that are required, you then select the, the type of document that you're uploading. So if I were to get up there. And let's say that this is um, proof of uh, workers comp, upload the document. And you'll see that the document is here. What the system is going to do is, um, I, I did proof of workers comp. That happened to be one of the documents that is required. And so um, I didn't highlight it before, but that was one of the items uh, noted as missing. And so by uploading it, the system recognizes that that particular requirement has been met. Um, so we'll come back to the uh, the uh, agency general form. Here's where you identify uh, the particular uh, program. So um, let me just revert back to my NAMI days. 
and not to be at all suggestive or anything here. Um, don't put in dollar signs or commas. And the reason this step's important is that uh, the program specific uh, section requires you to identify uh, the program. Um, so if there are multiple programs and you go ahead and um, I'm only, you know, let's just put it in anyway. So let's just, let's So the first is the program plan narrative. Here's where you have to then, if you have multiple programs you're seeking funding for, is just select the, the program. So let's do this. Okay, good news that tied to the template. So here we go. Uh, the fields that have the yellow background are required fields. So those have to be completed in order to and saved. So as we go along, and I'm just going to. And actually, before I, you'll notice that it says missing required for 20 questions. So I filled out two of them, save, and now it's down to 18. So it's keeping track of um, the answer. So I'm gonna to try to do this rapidly without wasting your time. And there are numeric fields such as this one. Tony or Tony Jablinski. Either. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. We're good. Happen there. Um, just a quick footnote. The um, my business partner is um, actually one of my daughter's father-in-law, um, but uh, when he resigned from the family business after about thirty years, it was about the time uh, I wanted to have these systems built, and it took me about two days to realize I'm not a programmer. I'll do everything else, but I'm not a programmer. So it just so happened, and um, God was looking out for me. Um, my daughter said, we need to meet this family. And sure enough, they got married 15 years ago. Uh, but uh, he is uh, Oracle Developer of the Year. So this is an Oracle product, and it was um, it's a small business. It's called uh, Oracle Application Express. He was a developer of the year in 2005, and he's on the executive user board, and it's not uncommon for him to um, be given upgrades before they're uh, released um, to get his feedback on it. So we've been, for, uh, I've been fortunate. Um, the systems that he's built have been very stable, and, um, and he loves putting in new features and what have you. So uh, 
it took just a phone call and, and two minutes for him to find out what the issue was and to fix it. So for, thanks for your patience. Um, but you, I might, I don't know if you want to talk about this, Yosh, or not, but here you'll see that there's um, really three goals that have been. Oh, thank you. Where are we? Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> yes, uh, Alex and I had a discussion about goals and objectives. It just reminds me of my special education days. <laughs> goal, what's your goal? What's a, you know, what's the hierarchy and what differentiates it? So we'll try to spell that out. Uh, and you'll see underneath goal one. Then, uh, so goal one and the three objectives are required. Uh, there are two other sets of goals slash objectives. Those are not required. We'll be providing the direct services. And again, these are all about program specific. And again, you can save as you go. When all of the required fields are so what I did was in response 10, 10 is not numeric and two is not numeric. I don't, I don't understand how it's, it's at what percent but it would not accept 10 as a percent. I think it's looking for, um, it's converting, well, we'll find out here in a second. I think it's converting it to. Sure is. All right. Try it one more time. Well, so when we'll get that solved. So what happens then when you fit, fill in all of the required fields, what will pop up is a button that says submit. And once it, uh, once that pops up then you go ahead and hit submit and that section is then re regarded as um, complete. Uh, program demographics, create again. Uh, here you uh, select the program that you're reporting on and then the number of duplicate, unduplicated clients you expect to serve. And it's gonna track um, whether the sum of the different brackets within a category equal 50. So the categories are age group, gender, ethnicity, and uh, financial, uh, uh, colon, poverty. So I'm just going to put 40 to show to the other ones.
apply changes. And you'll notice that it shows that you're still 10 unaccounted for relative to gender. So if I put in. You notice now the submit button comes up. You get a one last chance before clicking. And Um, you'll see the shows that submitted. Uh, personnel form. Select a program. Create. And here you click on add person. And the title, the person's name, and then um, that person's um, Say if they're a full-time person at the agency, that would be one uh, FTE. What's the um, what's that person's salary at the agency? How much of that uh, FTE and salary is uh, dedicated to the program? And how much of the funding from the mental health uh, board uh, makes up that? So if the total agency FTE was one and the salary was ten thousand and half their time is on the program, that would be 0. 0.5 and uh, 5,000. And let's say um, a quarter of their time would be uh, funded by the mental health board uh, for the particular program in question, that would be 0. 0.25 and then 25 as an example. And continue to add all the persons that are associated with the program that are that you're asking for uh, support from the mental health board on. Um, again, save responses. When you're done, go ahead and hit submit. Uh, the system's not going to know when you're done, so that's why the submit button is there. On the uh, revenue form, um, you'll notice that uh, under the Lyle budgeted revenue, that's the amount that you requested, you know, for uh, funding. And all of these um, fields need to be uh, completed, even if it's zero. And again, once you're done, uh, with doing that, you save. And again, the system's not gonna know whether, because you do have the opportunity to add another role. If there's not a role that's germane to you know, your revenue, um, you can add another role. And so uh, that's why the submit button uh, is visible from the beginning. And again, once you've filled out at least the minimum uh, set of fields, uh, and then you're, you're set to go. Last in the step three uh, section is the expense form. Um, similar. Um, what is going to be required, however, is that your total Lyle expense equals your total Lyle revenue. And so this here should, uh, will be zero, and that's the validation that the system is looking for. So before I get to the last part, any kind of going through, through this fairly rapidly, but what, what questions does anyone have? A moment before we get to the last section. Uh, Kara has a question, and, and her question is 
uh, do operating funds relate to the total budget or to the program budget? And I, I think our discussion was that operating funds is the whole kit and caboodle for the agency. Is that correct? Well, here we have, um, we actually break it out. So there's a um, much like what we had for the personnel side. Um, you have, you break out what's the total agency expense for salary and wages. Actually, this comes from the personnel form. So you notice on row one, um, there are no uh, editable fields there. Um, that will come from the personnel form. Uh, but to answer the question, I think, is that uh, you have, you, you're looking at revenue and expense both from the, for that particular program, from the full agency view. Uh, I'm sorry, take that back. Uh, it's total agency expenses. Then you look at the program expense and then you're looking at the how much of that uh, program expense is being asked to be covered by the mental health board well last one is lyle expense which means uh, that's what they're asking the mental health board to cover with the uh, funding Just to jump back to our little uh, glitch there that we had. So this is what the um, agency uh, general form looks like. Your, what's your mission statement, uh, description of your current programs, uh, recent uh, major achievements. And then the, this section gets into uh, documents that the mental health board is looking for you to provide. And those, uh, so some of it's conditional, right? If you're um, if you're accredited, or if if not, um, then they're asking for policies and procedures. So uh, you know this is an area to read through. And that drop down list for those uh, key document uploads reflects this dialogue here. I don't know if you want to speak at all to any of this here. Um, in terms of this, there specific questions. There's a requirement there for policies and for agency policies and procedures. So, I mean, are you looking for like our whole policy and procedure manual? <laughs> About a manual. Well, I mean, that's what a lot of agencies are going to have. They're going to have, I mean, that's what we have. We have our whole agency policy and procedure. Okay, we for specific 20. policies and procedures or the whole, the whole thing? Because, I mean, that's just, it's just a lot. Yeah, I agree. You know, <laughs> paper, and I don't know that you guys are watching. A lot of hopes and jobs, let alone having. And I'm not going to read through their policy and procedure. No. I'm not going to do that. You're going to report on it. Come on, Alex. So I don't know. We're at an impasse here. Uh, we've got we've got a, a prompt here that suggests it's going to be a policy and procedure. But I don't want your report. Sure. Well, that would be what I would. Yeah. So I don't know what attached what's because that's I don't know what I mean. It's just that's general. 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 It's quite a lot of policy. Yeah. Well, you've got other boards that have done this, so do they? Not, not so much on the policies and procedures. So, what um, would be the entry that would satisfy without having an entire policy and procedure? They, um, well, they're looking for the determination letter. Um, they're looking for, oftentimes, uh, many of them are looking for the most recent financial fund. Um, they're 990s. Uh, Is that included there? No, it's not. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, you you want to know that we're a legitimate nonprofit, right? That we, you know, file a proper paperwork. Um, you know, it's, you know the, 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 it just seems to me the policies and procedures piece is a little bit maybe deeper than, right? So, in my opinion, that you want to having wearing my 708 board president hat, maybe and my agency hat. How about this? <laughs> Cut around. We'll enter C 
our website on our website the policy and procedure name. Well, we don't have an no, option. Right. Well, yeah, why, yeah, why do we need that question? Uh, or could it be uh, optional? Uh, it was a question of whether you're accredited, and if you're not accredited, then give us the um, something else. A lot of times Maybe. they ask for like the bylaws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can What's ask another one. Bylaws. I mean, that's I don't see that often, but it has been asked for. That's the main one. Yeah. Is that that's reasonable? Yes. Well, will everybody yeah. know that? That would be what we. Need. Well, we can we, we can edit this. We can change. Yeah. Let's, let's and you, just, you know, it just shows that your nonprofit <coughs> is governed by a board of directors instead of our internal policies and procedures that. Could be yeah. Okay. You could do a yes/no question. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. the other piece. Is do you have these following policies and procedures? Mm -hmm. If there's things yeah. that you're interested yeah. in, yeah. and then we could just say yes/no, and then if we sign the document, we're stating all the information in the document. Then it's there to refer to it during an audit or something like that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Another option, you guys, is also just to ask us to include a link to our. Um, Charity Navigator, our candid reporting. Uh, our candid reporting would show you that we had met compliance for all of those things and would also have a link to our 990, uh, which also has the checklist that shows that we've met all of those obligations as well. Unfortunately, Kara, I've got my the volume all the way up and and I'm I'm just barely catching it. Um, I'll write it. Okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I guess we need to tweak that um, so we don't create a burden on both both ends of the portal. Um. So we're, uh, are we good to this this point? Okay. So the the um, next is authorization cover form, and the kind of the assumption here is that all the other sections have been completed. I didn't want to spend all the time trying to fill out every field, but um, this is the last step in the process. You hit create. Now, once you hit create, what it's going to do is identify what's still left to do, if there is anything. You will have, a, I did not select, I agree, a missing required two questions. That is in the form, uh, uh, authorization and cover form itself. Um, these are all the other ones that still need to be done. Remember, we had two programs there. So you need to have your set of uh, narratives, um, demographics, personnel, revenue, and expense. All those forms have to be done for each program that you're asking for funding for. The, um, you know, any additional explanation that you want to give to um, the application, uh, looking to hear is to, um, that you're agreeing um, that, uh, you know, you've read the funding guidelines and, and that you have the authority to apply for these funds. In some systems, we just have, I agree, with the assumption being that they're doing this and they, but, um, the thought was, well, let's put it, you know, disagree and see, kind of validate that, uh, that process a little bit further. So assuming then that, this is the last step in the process that all the others have taken place and that up here, it would say, um, just simply, okay that none of these were, you know, you've already taken care of all these different requirements. And then there'd be a submit button here. And by clicking on that, then you'll get an email confirmation, assuming it goes through to you that it isn't a Gmail account, that, um, you know, that you've, the 708 board is confirming that the application has been submitted. And Yosh will receive an email uh, notifying him that that agency so and so has submitted. We do know that Yosha's uh, Lyle Township email does get the messages. So 
There's also a dashboard that uh, you can refer to to see who has um, actually what applications are pending as well as which ones have been completed. Oh, one other item I will say is that there you can print a PDF of those particular sections. There's also a PDF option at the beginning to do the whole application. What I'm going to do in terms of downloadable documents is to uh, put a blank application uh, for you to download in case you want to look at it uh, without having to be on the system. Let's see what the different sections do. So I'll show you all the different questions and, and uh, data that's being asked for. I've got a couple of questions. What, why is, when they had that trouble with the merit glitch on that vehicle, is that something that everybody knows how to get around? No, 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 we'll fix it. That's that's an error that needs to be addressed. Yeah, but yeah, I'll do it right after this. Actually, that's good. Any other questions? I, I have some questions specifically about the 708 you know, the Lyle Township and what you're looking for and, you know, just some questions with regard to that. Is that appropriate now or? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Many of you have already seen, but this is what Alps used to utilize in order to create a software. You'll see various categories that, that we're specifically looking for, but uh, that's and then the last box is other, so some other open questions. I'm curious, what was your question? I mean, with that, does that answer your question about gives me a little more information? Yeah. But and also, those clients you might serve, they need to be from Lyle Township? Yes, that, that's one of the things that our overlord trustees at the township is yeah. going to be very carefully monitoring. Yes. <laughs> Therefore, it's great work. Make sure that if we give you fifty thousand dollars, half of it is going to Wheaton, half of it goes to the Well, there's a workaround on that. If, if there's, let's say, forty percent of your clients are coming from our catchment area, then you can ask for that. At least it's fine. Yeah. Ask for that percent sure. as a support to your general program. Sort of prorated fund. And then it sounded like you said that you cannot submit the grant application under the uh, a Gmail. Account. Well, you just won't get notice of. First of all, um, we'll set it up that for the registration part to get the login, you'll get it via text as well as email. So that's what that's how I was able to get in. Um, I put in a Gmail account. I don't know if you noticed when I put the uh, profile in, but I also put in my phone number for the text. So we send both out. We know the text will get there, um, but if it's more convenient for you than the, you know, the Gmail, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, email option, if it works, you know, it will be there. But we have it covered one way or the other. That so even on the confirmations, we'll look at you know a text confirmation as well. Mm -hmm. So, have that in parallel with any kind of email. Um, I think any kind of email notice is going forward, we're going to have to do text as well as the email, just to make sure. So that's why that phone number is there. And I, I think the problem is probably specifically Gmail, as opposed it, to... It, it, uh, I, you know, we didn't test a lot of the other... We didn't test uh, Hotmail or... or right. So anyway, text... Yeah. Texting is will be the backup. 
so that you will get some sort of reply. Anything else? Well, I'm looking forward to responses to see what you guys come up with. <laughs> and I don't envy you doing all this. <laughs> well, if, if there's money, it might be worth it. <laughs> well, thank you for putting all this together. Yeah, it's such a quick amount of time. To enable us to be able to apply. So thank you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you. 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 Looking forward to your application. And please, we've got a lot of food there, and make sure you take your souvenir water bottle. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So I think, you know, this, we might want a couple of days to get changes made before. So okay. um, sure. actually, we can have it even done by tomorrow morning, I suppose. I, I think what they can do is they can start. They can register it tonight, yeah. and then and then if they run into a snag, then within one or two days the snag might be cleared up. But if if we're, you can probably stop recording. Um, I think I think somebody else is handling that part. Your information on the site. Why does Jason trouble? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I didn't go far enough down on the list. Contact me for system. I'm open to, for that support for sure. Okay. So maybe the we normally what we've done with others. If you want them to. Yeah. Yeah. I've got my email and phone number. Okay. So, um, but normally uh, is to have Yota on there for oh, contact yeah. questions, right. and, uh, system questions, contact. Okay. So that's part of the circuit. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Well, I've been on that other side, and I went to me. Well, nice to meet you too. Thank you. Okay, so I'm stopping the recording, <laughs> and you got access to the link, I assume. Uh, I'm not using. She's not on any longer, so I'll stop it. I'll stop it here.